good afternoon dear children of class 10 so last class we did homologous series so what is a homologous series it is a series of organic compounds having similar chemical properties and having same general formula for example for alkene for alkene what is the general formula for alkene alkene What is the general formula? C N H two N plus two. And what is what is N? N is number of carbon atom. N is number of carbon atom. So N is number of carbon atom. Alkene C N H two N plus two. Now let's derive. formula which i could not do when i was doing in computer and also see here if n is equal to 1 if n is equal to 1 then what will we get then put the value of n in this formula then we get c 1 h 2 <coughs> into 1 plus 2 that is C one H two ones are two plus two four. That is C H four. That is methane. Methane. So C one and hydrogen four. Then it becomes methane. L K N. L N. So when we will have a when there is carbon carbon single bond when there is single bond between carbon atoms they will say it is alkene. Okay. Now if a is equal to two then what will have C two H two into two plus two that is C two H six. And C two and six. And what will be its name? It N. So when carbon is one, that is meth. When carbon is two, then it becomes it. Okay. When carbon is one, it becomes meth. When carbon is one, it becomes it. Then from alkene, suffix is N. 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 Whenever you see suffix N, means there is no double bond or triple bond between carbon atoms. There is single bond between carbon atoms, hence it is a saturated hydrocarbon. Okay. Now let's see for alkene. So that means what I am what I am saying is that means if I use this formula, then I will be getting I will be getting group of organic compounds. Group of organic compounds, series of organic compounds, and this series of organic compounds are homologous series. Why homologous series? Because they have same general formula, they have similar chemical properties, and the difference between the successive organic compounds will be of 14 units in their molecular mass and. C has two unit in their molecular formula. For example, methane is CH4, ethane is C2H6. Now, what is the difference? See here, CH4, C2H6. So, what is the difference? If you want to reduce the number, if you want to reduce the number, then carbon here is two and carbon here is one. So, if you subtract. Then you will be having one carbon, and hydrogen is six, hydrogen is four. Then you will get C as two. So, so this is different. That means in a homologous series, organic compounds, successive organic compounds, differ in their molecular formula by C S two unit, by C S two unit. And and another thing. If you see molecular or molecular mass, the carbon molecular mass of carbon is 12 into 1 plus molecular mass of hydrogen is 1 and number of atoms here is 2, so you will be having 14 units. So 
in a homologous series, successive organic compounds will be differing by 14 unit will be differing by 14 unit molecular mass of successive organic compounds in homologous series d4 by 14 unit and molecular formula will differ by CS2 unit so that is what is a homologous series so similarly if you do for similarly if you do for alkene alkene so what is the general formula for alkene it is C and H 2N and what kind of hydrocarbon we say alkene alkenes are those hydrocarbons having at least one double bond between carbon atoms that means carbon organic compounds or hydrocarbon having at least one double bond between carbon atoms then it becomes alkene Okay, so the general formula is N S P N. And if N is equal to 1, then what I will have? I will have C1 at 2 into 1, that is C at 2, that is unstable. This is not a stable compound. This is not a stable compound. That means this does not, this is not anything. That means for, for, Alkene, that is the simplest hydrocarbon known, simplest hydrocarbon known with one carbon atom is methane. There is no other, there is no other hydrocarbon, there is no other hydrocarbon, mind you, there is no other hydrocarbon which have one carbon atom, which have one carbon atom other than methane and its derivatives methane and its derivatives that means there is no methane there is no methane and, is, and there is no methane at all there is no methane methane is there methane is not there methane is also not there so alkene starts from carbon number 2 if n is equal to 2 then now we have in C2 at 2 into 2 that is C C2 at 4. So this so that means alkene starts from ethene. Alkene starts from ethene. Ethene is the first alkene in the series. In the series. Ethene is the first member, first alkene in the series. Okay, there is that means there is no methane. And if you follow the formula, then you will be getting uh, series of alkene, series of alkene. And here also, again, if n is equal to three, I will be getting C three at two into three. That is C three at six. C3 at 6. Just double the, uh, double the number of carbon atoms. So what will be the number of hydrogen atoms in uh, alkene? It is just double the carbon atom. Say for example, if there is a if there is a organic, if there is alkene whose carbon number is 14, whose carbon number is 14, then what will be the number of hydrogen atoms in this compound? It is very simple. What do you do? 14 into 2. That is 28. So, if, if there is alkene with carbon number 14, then what will be the number of hydrogen atoms in that particular compound? It is 2 into number of carbon atoms. That is 14. 2 into 14 makes 28. So the formula becomes C14 as 28. So C3 as 6 and it is propene. Propene. Now if you see the different, they, they will have similar uh, properties. The chemical properties also similar and physical properties also will be similar. So here if you see the difference are in carbon atom is 1 C. And difference in hydrogen is H2. So that means 
These are the successive members of a homologous series. Okay, so regarding homologous series, we have already done. This is uh, this is uh, for this is recap only. Okay, this is uh, recap only regarding homologous series. So today we will be doing nomenclature. So today we will be doing nomenclature. Now what do you mean by nomenclature? I think you are familiar with the word nomenclature. Nomenclature means the system of naming. The scientific way of naming is nomenclature. So since this is organic chemistry, so here will be naming organic compounds. Here will be naming organic compounds. And nomenclature is the system of assigning, assignment of names to organic compounds. Since uh, nomenclature can be for anything, but here we'll be doing for organic compounds. And uh, we'll be no naming, we'll be naming these organic compounds. Uh, using IUPAC rules using IUPAC rules IUPAC rules so what is the full form of IUPAC International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry IUPAC. Okay. So before this, before the establishment of this IUPAC, okay, which was uh, which was established in the year 1957. So before 1957, also there were organic compounds, and since the compounds were there. So they were given the names, the common names were given, and these common names here is said as trivial names. Trivial, trivial names. So trivial names means common names. Trivial names means common names. Trivial names means common names names okay so trivial names or common names okay then according to now we'll be doing here as for your syllabus we'll be doing uh, trivial names also IUPAC also IUPAC names also will give and trivial names also will give okay IUPAC names are also for chemical names okay and then common names are also the trivial names. Trivial names. For example, formic acid. Formic acid. The acid that is present in the sting of ant. The acid present in the sting of ant is forming acid. Forming acid. So it got name. It got name from from this one, from the animal ant itself, from the animal insect ant itself. Because ant in Latin or Greek, I'm not sure, they are said uh, something like forma or something like that. So from there only this formic acid has come. So since this is come from the common names, this is the trivial name, then what is its scientific or chemical name or IUPAC name? So it is Methanoic acid. So methanoic acid will be IUPAC name and formic acid will be common names. Now IUPAC names will have certain rules, guidelines, how to name a compound, how to name a compound. There are guidelines, there are rules for naming organic compounds under IUPAC but for trivial or common names there are no such system 
So, it is very tough to learn to memorize all the common names or trivial names because there is no logic behind that. There is no logic behind that. Why potato is said potato? There is no logic. Okay, so it is, so they are given common names, the tribal names. So, but for IUPSC, there are million and million of compounds. So why you must be thinking why IUPSC names, why a nomenclature under IUPSC, why IUPSC names are given? It is because there are million and millions of compounds, and common names are also there for these compounds. Then how to learn all these common names? Since there is no room, no system, it is not systematized, then how to learn? So, for making the learning of organic chemistry, name of organic chemistry, for, sorry, for naming organic compounds in a systematic way, IUPSC has given some rules. So, if we follow those rules, it will be very much easy for us to name any of the organic compound, otherwise it will be tough for us. So, trivial names are common names. Now, this is the same compound H, C, O, O, N. So, how many carbon atoms are here? How many carbon atoms are here? One. So, one carbon atom means meat. Meat, I will be telling you regarding this in detail, in uh, detail, but this is example only. So, one carbon atom means meat. And since this has a, this is, this, uh, means this will have a single bond only. There is no carbon, no other carbon atom, mind you. There is no other carbon atom, single carbon atom. So, there is no question of whether it is alkene or alkyne. Because there is no alkene or alkyne with one carbon atom. So, this is N, alkane only. So, from alkane, it is N with N. And since it is acid, so suffix will come as methanoic acid. So this is methanoic acid. And this is only the common name for methanoic acid is formic acid. Formic acid. Now, I'll be telling you how many parts the name of an organic compound consists. So, the name, the name of an organic compound consists, consists The name of an organic compound consists of three parts. Three parts. The name of an organic compound consists of three parts. They are number one. So it consists of three parts. Number one is what? root. Number one is root word or word root. Root word or word root. Word root. Number two. Number two is suffix. Suffix. Number three is prefix. Prefix. So, number one is word root or root word. What root I will be, it will be easy for me to tell what root only is. So what root only, you can say what root also or root word also. Then two is suffix, then three is prefix. So these are the three, these are the three parts of the name of an organic compound. The name of an organic compound. Now let me tell you, an organic compound, the name of an organic compound yeah, must have word root and must have suffix. Some of the organic compound may not have prefix. Some of the organic compound may not have 
prefix. Okay, but there are no organic compounds without suffix or word root. Without suffix or word root, there are no organic compounds. But there are organic compounds without prefix. For example, this methanoic acid only. This meat is word root and suffix only. Oic acid is also suffix. That means there is no prefix. There is no prefix. Okay. So which are the word root, which are the suffix, which are the prefix, I'll be telling you now. For propane it is 
C3 and 8 is propane. If you remove one hydrogen, you'll be getting C3 and 7, which is propyl, and so on. Butyl, pentyl, and so on. These are used as prefix. Then hello groups are also considered as prefix. They are written in front of this root word. They are written in front of root word. For example, if you have methane, if you have methane, if you have methane, and you have fluorine also. So how do you write? You will be writing chloromethane. That means this chloro you will be writing in front of in front of this root word. In front of this root word, you will be writing chloro. Similarly, this alkyl group also you will be writing in front of the word root. That means so far where we are, we are here. Prefix plus root word. Prefix plus root word. Up to here we have done now. But this, this does not complete your naming of the organic compound. We are in the states. Okay, this does not complete. We need suffix. Without suffix, organic compound is not complete. It is naming of organic compound is complete with the suffix only. So suffix has to come. There has to be root word and suffix. Okay. Prefix, some of the compounds can have prefix, some of the compounds do not. But root word and suffix are essential. There must be root word and suffix. Now Let's see what are the suffix we'll be using. Let's see what are the suffix we'll be using. Suffix. Now again, suffix are of two types. Suffix are of two types. One is primary suffix. Primary suffix. And the other is secondary suffix. One is primary suffix and the other is secondary suffix. Primary suffix and secondary suffix. Now which of the suffix we say primary suffix and which of the suffix we say secondary suffix. So let's see. Alkane. Alkane. From alkane, from alkane, Okay, this is functional group. Nature of bone, you can say nature of bone, or you can say functional group also, then suffix. Suffix. Nature of bone and nature of bone and Name, general following book, okay. name, general name, general name. Now if it is alkene, if it is alkene, that is carbon, single bond, carbon. If there are no double bond, if there are no double bond in the compound, then it will have carbon, carbon, single bond. And suffix here we will be using is a and E. For alkane, suffix will be A and E. For alkene, C double bond C. Then it will be E and E. E and E. Then for alkyne, C triple bonded to C alkyne. 
So suffix will be y and e. Suffix will be y and e. So example, example. If carbon number is two, if carbon number is two, then what will be the alkene with carbon number two? Carbon number two, alkene with carbon number two. Alkene with carbon number two will say it. Alkene with carbon number two. Okay. Carbon number two means root word will be it. Root word will be it. So it will be it. It. Then suffix will be n. Ethan. Ethan. So C double single bond C and all hydrogen. So one carbon will have how many arms? Four arms all together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is common between two. Okay. And rest of the arms will be filled by hydrogen. Hydrogen. Then it becomes C two H six. So how will you name C two H six? Ethan. How will you name C two H six? Ethan. Then if the carbon number is two and it is in, then carbon number two means eth only, and double bond is there, so it will be in. So what will be the structure of carbon number C? Double bond into C. One two. I'm saying one carbon will have how many arms? Four arms. One two. Three four. One two. Three four. Then fill the hydrogen. As the general formula for this is CnH two H so C two H four. C two H four. Then, what is the what is the difference between ethene and ethane? Number of hydrogen. Number of hydrogen is more here and it is less here. That's why it is saturated. It is unsaturated hydrocarbon. And if it is Y and E, if we have to do and carbon number is two, then what do you do? Eth, wine, ethane. It will be ethane. Carbon will have triple bond between carbon. Carbon will have triple bond between carbon and one one hydrogen only. So what is the general formula for this? C N H two N minus two. C N H two N minus two. So C two H two into two minus two is C two H two to four four minus two is two. So are you getting C? Two at also two so C two at two. That means that means the if the carbon number is same, if the carbon number is same, then there will be difference of two hydrogens in alkene, alkene and alkyne. At two triple bond, at four double bond, at six single bond. So. In the yeah, if the if the alkene, alkene, and alkyne have same number of carbon atoms, then there will be difference in hydrogen numbers. Okay, by two, by two. Okay, so these are the primary suffix will be using. Primary suffix will be using. Now, these are the primary suffix will be using. Now. Secondary suffix. Then, what are the secondary suffix will be using? What are the secondary suffix will be using? These are primary suffix. Okay. Now, if there is a compound like this. Like this, 
Then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. Now what is the name? How many common items are the first of all? First uh, first is you have to find root word. Root word. Root word can be found by counting the number of carbon atoms. So carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 carbon atoms. So 5 carbon atoms means paint. So it is paint. Paint. And since there is no double bond, since there is no double bond, so it is alkane. Since there is no double bond between carbon atoms, means it is alkane. And what is the suffix we use for alkane? A and E. So it will be pentane. You can fill hydrogen here and without hydrogen also you can say. Okay. So this is pentane. What is this? Pentane. So this way we name. This naming of uh, naming of the compounds will be doing more. But before this, we need to learn the rules for naming an organic compound. Now, finally, what we have is now secondary suffix. So, which are the secondary suffix? Which are the secondary suffix? All the functional groups. All the functional groups except hello, zen, hello groups, alkyl groups, alkane, alkene, alkyl. Alkyne and alkyl groups are not considered as uh, secondary suffix. So secondary suffix for your label will be number one alcohol. Alcohol. Number two ketone. Number three aldehyde. Number four. Carboxylic acid. So these are four functional groups which can be considered as secondary suffix. These are the functional groups which are considered under secondary suffix. Which are considered under secondary suffix. Now you must be thinking what is a functional group. Functional group is is a, is a heteroatom or group of atoms having different group of atoms okay heteroatom or group of atoms which give a specific meaning okay as an atom or group of atoms joined in a specific manner which is responsible for the characteristic chemical properties of the organic compound that means it is an atom or group of atoms which is joined with the organic compounds and which will totally change the chemical properties of the organic compound with the presence. Say for example, for example, this is methane. This is methane. And what is the formula for methane? This is methane. H, 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 H. Now, if you want to remove this hydrogen, if you want to remove this hydrogen, by chlorine. If you want to remove this hydrogen by chlorine, then what it will be? C. Here will be Heteroatom, actually, it has to be heteroatom, not all atom. Heteroatom. Why it is heteroatom? Other than carbon and hydrogen atom are called heteroatom. So, functional group is heteroatom or group of atoms. If you write heteroatom, it will be more specific. Heteroatom or group of atoms which is joined with organic compounds in a specific manner and totally changes chemical properties of the compound, which is responsible for the change in chemical properties of the compound. So here, the properties of methane is totally different than the properties of this compound. Only what I have changed is hydrogen is replaced by chlorine. Hydrogen is one hydrogen is replaced by one chlorine atom, but the property of this compound will be totally different than the properties of methane. Okay, so this chlorine here is 
board is also vowel and starting of the suffix is also vowel. We will remove e. We will remove e. So it will be o l. So it is with an o. This will be learning the next class. How to name uh, an organic compound? These are some of the things we need. These are the parts of the name of organic compound and uh, the next class we will be learning what are the rules for naming an organic compound and we will be doing some examples regarding how to how to write name of organic compounds so what do we say this what do we say this what is this then this is molecular formula molecular formula and this the branching one if you show everything whatever is present not in condensed way but in this way in this format then it is called structural formula structural formula so if you show everything if you show whatever atoms are present in the molecular formula with the bond, then that is called a structural formula. So, regarding rules of nomenclature of organic compounds, and some of the few examples regarding how to name organic compounds, we will be doing in the next class. This was for today. Thank you.